Studio 3B in Rockefeller Center. Here is Jane Pauley. Good evening. You've probably heard that many cities across the country are enjoying a drop in crime. But is everyone enjoying the sense of safer streets? That's what the Justice Department wants to know, and it's now investigating police departments in several cities to see how they're responding to complaints and whether there are patterns of excessive force. We decided to conduct an experiment to see how New York police would act when confronted with a simple request from citizen to cop. And what our Dateline hidden cameras found is that some of New York's finest may not be living up to their department's own high standards. Are some cops forgetting they're the good guys? Here's John Hockenberry. Your nickname was The Mechanic? Yes, it was. And why were you given this nickname? Because I used to tune people up. What do you mean by tune people up? That's a police word for beating up people. To be a victim of a crime is one thing, but what if you were the victim of an abusive police officer? What if you witnessed a cop actually beating someone up? What could you do about it? Ironically, might you have to tell another police officer of your complaint? Yeah, I don't know how to file a complaint. Okay, what kind of complaint? For police abuse. Would you find a courteous, helpful officer? Well, it depends how you want to go with it. Or would you get a different reception? Maybe even downright hostility. I heard you say I was a f***ing ass. I just heard you. You heard me say that? Yes. Then maybe you have a hearing problem. The entire nation probably remembers one hot day last summer in New York City when one man came forward and told what happened to him in the custody of police officers. The first thing they said to me, if I yelled or making any noise, they kill me. You may remember that Abner Luima was allegedly beaten and horribly sodomized with a toilet plunger inside the 70th Precinct House last summer. The case is in court now, but as we'll show you, it revealed a lapse in law enforcement policy that goes far beyond Abner Luima. What you may not know is that Luima's family told us they went to the 70th Precinct with the story of their injured relative to file a complaint just as you or I might. Amazingly, they say they were turned away. Abner Luima's cousin and spokesman, Sam Nicholas. They told the sergeant that they wanted to file a complaint. And he says, um, the name of the person, he said, I want to file a complaint about Abner Luima. And their response? He ignored them. And another police officer came out, a sergeant, and he says, you can't uh, make a complaint here. An NYPD official confirmed the Luima family came to the 70th Precinct, but told us he did not have a record of their attempt to file a complaint. You had faith that you could walk into that yes, police did. station yes, and that someone would listen? Yes, we did, yeah. Were you stupid? To think that? <laughs> we were stupid to think that we thought that, you know, courtesy, professionalism, and respect that, it, you know, they meant something. So you believed that sign on the cars? Yes, we did. Yes, we did. Courtesy, professionalism, and respect. It's a slogan that now appears on almost every New York City police car. We wanted to see how well the NYPD was living up to its own standard. Yeah, I want to know how to file a complaint. We wanted to do what the Luima family says it tried to do. About a police abuse incident? File a citizen complaint. In order to make the complaint, you got to bring it back to the precinct. So what kind of a reception would an ordinary citizen get from the NYPD? How do you go about filling out a... Just watch. ...complaint on an officer about police... To help us, we contacted the Florida-based Police Complaint Center. What we have here are all the complaints we received across the country. Headed by this man, Diop Kamau, a crusader who has pioneered the use of hidden camera video to monitor the police and expose abusive cops. <laughs> to test the largest police department in the country, Kamau assigned Dateline his chief investigator, Paul Parker. And my main thing as a tester, I just want to be able to show exactly what they do, one way or another. I portray myself as a victim, going in there, just basically asking questions in general, um, like the mass population. Can I just fill some out? I mean, I, I, I have you to go. Don't, you don't fill the form out. We fill the form out. Dateline designed the test. The oh, hidden so cameras were ours. Paul, experienced with police departments it. all over the nation, we was our guy. Form out, and then it gets handed in. We were in constant radio contact with him to monitor the testing and to make sure our ground rules were followed. Yeah. Going to precinct 41, precinct 41. Our instructions to our tester, Paul, were for him to play a victim or a witness of police abuse. We didn't want to file a false complaint or be provocative in any way. All we wanted was information. 
As you'll see, Paul is uncomfortable giving his name or discussing actual details with a police officer, as people who report police abuse typically are, especially inside a station house. We visited 15 precinct houses late at night in all five New York boroughs over a four-day period last October. I just want to know, how do you go about... When our cameras went to the 41st precinct, we saw how, according to official New York police policy, a complaint is supposed to be received. Go to the boss, okay? This officer, as he's supposed to, immediately refers Paul to the highest ranking officer right. in the station. Here, a lieutenant. A couple of different ways you can do it. Okay. Number one. He outlines the options available. You can do it here right now. Uh, you fill out the paperwork, I make the phone call to CCLB. According to department policy, a person can file a complaint right in the station house. They can call the 800 number of the Civilian Complaint Review Board, the CCRB or simply take a complaint form home and mail it back. Talk to them direct, or you can come back in if you want to give it to us. There's no pressure here, just friendly cooperation. You got a nickname or anything? Um, that's all right. That's all right. Paul's unease at giving details or his name causes no problems. He leaves with the form and all the correct information. Through the video camera's eyes, a by-the-book performance. That was, I, I would say, an uh, excellent way of more or less showing how it should be done. Is there any reason why it shouldn't be like that every time? No, no reason at all. I want to know how you go about filing a complaint on a cop what about? about abuse. But that by-the-book response is not what we received from many of the precincts we visited. You got, um, is that something I can, uh, something I can fill out? You got it, you have to tell me about it first. Here at the 47th, these officers, the one on the right, a sergeant, tried to get information and won't give out the form. Get some document or something? Not until I hear from you. You gotta tell us what happened. You got like a form, something I can take? A form? You got a form? No, you guys are really hard to get. I know. She wasn't there at school. You told me about it. No, I told you, Sergeant, it's, it's about uh, abuse. I need to know who it was, whether they work here or not, what the abuse was. Paul continued to press, and the officers continued right. to resist. Now, I'm saying that I want to be able to fill something out that says that, you know, more or less, this is my situation okay. and, what, and what went down. Okay. You I know, need to know what that situation is. They never even mentioned the 800 number. Finally, they just give Paul this suggestion. Well, you can do it. You think, you think about it, come back. I think that's a good idea. Think about it, come back. I think that's your best course of action. I'm in. And that's it. That's it. That's it. Take it easy. The officer didn't even look up. He didn't give him that much respect just to look me eye in eye. Maybe he's busy. But I'm coming in with a complaint. Maybe he had a bad day. I'm a part of his uh, work because they had a bad day. Does that make it okay? It definitely make it all right. Think about it, come back. I think that's we showed a representative sample of our tapes to the top man in the NYPD, Commissioner Howard Safer, who told us it's a challenge to get a message from the top to filter down to every precinct. I mean, th this just plays exactly into the expectation that there's no interest well, on the part that, of the police in, in dealing with this. In that particular case, there was no interest. It was inappropriate. Uh, that uh, sergeant needs to be retrained or disciplined. And certainly, that's not what I expect of my police officers. I think that's a good idea. I think about it. Come back. The desk sergeant's job is to respond to people who walk up and have a question, whether it's you want to file a complaint about a report or, or about a crime or, or whatever. Professor Sam Walker from the University of Nebraska has studied police departments across the country, including New York's. He wrote a report critical of New York City's complaint procedures. Well, what if I'm not comfortable about He says about gruff it. demeanor is often part of a systematic pattern by officers to minimize citizen complaints. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's they're going to try to screen out these complaints and discourage them, you know, go back, think about it, because they're pretty sure the, guy, the person won't come back. You wouldn't go back after, after getting that reception. I need a form to fill out on a cop about police abuse. It's certainly hard to imagine the citizen who would persevere with a complaint like Paul did here at the 40th precinct. Sir, tell me where the witness is. Um, Officer, um, Mac, how you say your name? I'm asking you where this happened. I don't, want, I don't even want to get off into that. What? I don't want to get off into that. Uh, can I ask you your name? I, I, I just want to get off into that, to, to that sergeant. Get out. I gotta get out? Yeah. Leave until you want to come in and tell me about this. I'm the one who's taking it. I gotta ask these questions. I want to cooperate with me. I can't take it. Whatever. Whatever you said. So you're wasting my time.
Remember, according to department policy, the sergeant should tell Paul about the 800 number and should give him a form, particularly if he asks for it. Let me ask you this, Sergeant. Do you have a, a form somebody can just take and go? When I ask you where it happened, I gotta know where it happened. How does it feel to be told to get out of my station? Number one, it's not his station. It's a taxpayer station. And we employ them. That's our money that can go into his salary. And like I say, it hurts. It hurts in part, Paul says, because at the heart of this encounter with a police officer, like so many others he's investigated, is the issue of race. No, I ask you more no you know, I understand. I just don't want to get off into it. You saw a young black male who didn't have any rights, that I probably did something wrong. He sees a criminal. Hmm? Is that what you're saying? A suspect in a crime. Not a citizen. Not a citizen. The NYPD told us racism is not acceptable and everyone is supposed to be treated with professionalism. But Paul says the best evidence that he was simply being harassed was what happened a few moments later. The form was sitting right there in front of the sergeant the whole time. It's totally inappropriate. I mean, that's somebody who needs retraining, discipline, and depending on his record, maybe he doesn't deserve to be dealing with the public. I can't understand that two months, three months after Luima, how can this guy be telling somebody to get out of the station who's trying to file a complaint? Do I endorse that? Do I in any way think that's proper behavior? Absolutely not. But is it possible that two months after Luima or 20 months after Luima that you're going to have somebody who acts inappropriately in a large organization? The answer is yes. Are we going to take action and fix it when it happens? Absolutely. Eight out of the 15 followed procedure and behaved properly. In seven precincts we tested, there was either incorrect information, incorrect procedures or rudeness, or all three. But in every one of those situations, nobody said, we're not taking your complaint and you have no redress. Professor Walker's assessment was tougher. Based on our results, the NYPD, he says, flunked. Eight out of 15 is not a passing grade. Not a passing grade in my course or any other course that I know of. In our interview, Commissioner Safer told us the NYPD had conducted 7,000 of its own tests and that 95% of its officers had passed. But a police department spokesperson told us their testing did not involve actually asking how to file a complaint against another police officer. Commissioner Safer also told us that he had reissued the guidelines for filing those kinds of complaints. And so if we decided to test again, he hoped we'd get different results. So we took the commissioner up on his challenge. In April, three months after Safer says he reissued his guidelines, we went back out and tested 17 more precincts all over the city. This time we used Diop Kamau, Paul's boss, as the tester. We used the same rules, simply asking for information about how to file a complaint. You want to complain about a cop beating somebody down? Kamau encountered this officer at the 52nd precinct. Well, you know, basically, man, you might work with the guy, so I basically want to know what my rights are, you know, what I have to do. What your rights are? Yeah, if I want to report a cop who beat somebody down. Well, if you want to tell me the particulars, how can I help you? You know, I ain't a cop, man, so I don't know the procedure. You, you know, I need to know what my rights are. Please tell me what happened. After repeated requests, this officer, against policy, wouldn't give out the form, didn't mention the 800 number. What if I just don't want to get into the facts, man? I just want to deal with what my rights are. How about that? After almost 10 minutes, he just took the next person in line. Yes, ma'am. You don't have to tell me. We did find some improvement during these tests. We noticed there were more high-ranking okay. officers, and in general, the demeanor was more cordial. That's the phone number that he can contact me. Okay. And I'll give you the number to see so I'll be file it another day. This lieutenant at the 71st precinct tried his best to follow procedure. Oh, I'll give you the form. And a uh, phone number you can call and you okay. go another precinct or whatever, okay? Okay, I appreciate that. But while the lieutenant was off getting the form, our tester had this confrontation with the officer on the desk. I'm sorry, you call me a what? Excuse me? I heard you say I was a f***ing ass. I just heard you. You heard me say that? Yes. Then maybe you have a hearing problem. We got almost the same results as our first test. 
Nine out of the 17 precincts followed procedure. Yeah, but you're going to write a report up and I'm going to read it. But almost half of the precincts, eight out of 17, didn't follow police department procedure or gave our tester a frosty reception. You just call me a f***ing ass just now. You called you one? Yes. That's what he's calling. I didn't hear that. If you walked into a, a retail store yeah, and you got that kind of response, you never shop there again. And you would tell all your friends not to shop there. The problem is, we, whatever city, you only have one police department. You have no alternative. A New York police department official said if they made mistakes, they want to learn from them and told us they would further address problems in handling complaints. The Luima family will never forget the reception they say they got from the NYPD when they tried to file a complaint. Professor Walker says that despite Commissioner Safer's efforts, the attitude of the NYPD may be hard to change. There's still something very deep in, in the culture of that department that is resistant to accountability. We'll continue our story on Friday. How did a simple traffic stop escalate into this? Get hands on your head, turn around! That story. NBC.